not that I'm sick of you, but I'm like kind of sick of you. What's up guys, it's Jensen. So today is August 31st. I thought it'd be a good idea to have her in the video to advise you guys on what <laughs> maybe can help um, and what maybe won't help. So this is my girlfriend. Hi. We just want to give you guys three tips on what could make the caretaking process easier for both parties and maybe what you need to consider if you're thinking of being the caretaker for somebody because it's not easy all the time. And um, it's not for everyone. And it's not for everyone, but it's also not that hard. No. Uh, it's just something that you have to think about and it's a person to person thing. So we're gonna start with number one, what I think is something you need to think about prior to actually doing it. And that is knowing your limits. With that, we mean just what can you handle? Because you're gonna be faced with a lot of things you probably didn't think you're gonna be faced with, like the drains is a huge thing. Can you handle like blood or like bodily fluids, I guess, if you can't? And that could affect a lot. And that could affect like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it because I'm gonna be too squeamish. It's gonna feel gross to me, but you don't wanna make the person feel like it's gross. I know some people throw up, some people get nauseous. That is another thing. For Can, a lot of... Yeah, like I don't think I would be able to handle it. I don't like throw up. I don't like throwing up in general, but I, I'm, I didn't have to face that, which was lucky of me because it totally could have happened because of the strong pain medication that right. he was on. If that's something that's like a no-no, like the blood thing, probably not gonna be able to do it. Another thing is sleeping. Like, I really value my sleep, and I'm a deep sleeper, and I like sleeping. However, the first couple nights especially, you have to be aware, and you have to be okay with getting up, and waking up, and being aware in the night. Because mm -hmm. um, you were, when you woke up, you, it wasn't like you were waking up and you were chilling in bed. We no. were, we, you were up, you were helping me do something. Yeah. Yeah, taking you to the bathroom, helping you with everything in the bathroom, getting you food if you want more pain medication, moving having, the pillows around, yeah. helping you get up because yeah. I had to have him give him support from the back mm -hmm. to get up. I feel like even the little yeah. things would maybe be more annoying because at some points I had to wake you up just to close or open a window. Oh yeah, when you, you were would, here. Mm -hmm. And you would like have to go back to sleep after that. I think I, for me that would be more annoying is those Just little things those like little that. things. Yeah. But you have to be okay with knowing that you're not gonna maybe get a lot of sleep. Because you didn't get a lot of, you didn't get normal sleep for a while. Yeah. Probably till she left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to know what your own personal limits are in order to even begin to maybe possibly do this thing yeah, for somebody Yeah, because it's else. almost like, like a checkbox. Like you have to be like, can I do this? Yes, I can. Can I do this? Yes, I can. Or, but don't go into it and then later down the line be like, oh, I actually can't do that. It's like, whoa, wait. I, you don't have an option. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. I don't think any of the other points would matter if that point isn't, if that box isn't checked, none of the other things matter because yeah. you're physically not going to be able to handle the next few days, the next week. Mm -hmm. It could last a long time. It could not last a long time. So something that is super important um, which I think we would both say is more important than knowing your limits, even though, like we said, it wouldn't exist. And that is being aware of what you say and how you say it. A reason why people can get post-op depression is because they don't have the right person supporting them or they don't have the right kind of support or enough support. And that can be many things, but I'm sure a lot is like the way that the caretaker is talking to them or kind of treating them like a burden and that's not okay. Right, because you need a lot of help with probably more things than you think that you need help with. For example, the first 24 hours, I needed to go use the restroom a lot, like really, really often, and she had to come with me. I went and then I had to go like seven to 10 minutes later, <laughs> um, which was a lot. I mean, that even surprised me. And she said, again? But she didn't say it in a way that was like, oh, you have to go again? Like, I have to take you again? Like, I have to do this thing for you again? She said it as like in, oh. Like genuine you have to go surprise. Again? <laughs> and I said the same thing, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I have to keep going. It didn't make me feel like I was being a burden at all. But that same thing could be said 
in a different way that would have made me feel like a burden yeah, super you don't, easily. And yeah, and you don't want to make the person feel like they can't ask you for things. That's all they're going to be doing for a while. Don't feel bad for asking and also don't make someone feel bad for asking. Yeah, you just have to keep in mind that that person that got the surgery is extremely vulnerable in more ways than just one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's hard to remember yeah. when you're in the moment because that moment seems like so long. Mm -hmm. But that moment is temporary. On top of that, something that ties into it, you'd have to ask each other, are you going to make me more paranoid? Or are you going to be able to reassure me that I'm okay? I don't know if that was maybe just a big thing for me because of how I am. <laughs> yeah, because especially, and that goes along with, and, and which can be intertwined with the what kind of relationship have, do you have to the caregiver prior to them being your caregiver? Like for me, we're in a relationship. So it's easier for me to know what to say and what not to say and, and to reassure him to make him feel better. And I'm a paranoid person. That's something, <laughs> yeah. which is why this, this is a point to make. I mean, you're like this in some ways where something physically hurts or something is on your skin that maybe shouldn't be there or whatever you think. Is that normal or am I gonna die? <laughs> yeah. Like that's why people don't go on WebMD. And but that's also because I know him like that. I know that he's like that. It's easier for me to reassure him and make him feel better because- right. it's not the first time. Yeah, it's not something new to me. Journey. Like because you're already like that, then it's not hard or weird for me, but someone can become like that. And it's like, yeah. whoa, I don't know how to deal with you like this. So Yeah, that is, that's a great point. <sighs> That can be a challenge. That Especially if that person's never had surgery before yeah. any type of... Yeah, that could be a definite unexpected challenge. You don't know if that's going to happen. It could happen. It could not. Um, but you have to definitely be prepared for them freaking out if, yeah. you know, like with trans guys, probably a lot of who are watching, it's more common that you're going to get paranoid because of those nipples, because of how they look, mm -hmm. because of just the way that they are supposed to heal. But because that's a thing because they look so bad. That's super common. So you have to be aware enough to know, is this something that's making them paranoid right now? Even if they might not say it. Yeah. Because you could be chilling on the bed and I'm like, you know, cleaning whatever. And I'm like looking at my chest for just a little too long, maybe that day. No, like, yeah. Quietly. It's, you really have to know how to read the person, which like I said, depends on what kind of relationship you have with the person yeah. already. I'm saying it's a luxury that like, I know you and I know if that you're acting, that yeah, and that if you're acting like this, it means this, or mm -hmm. I need to say this so you can feel better. Mm -hmm. um, but not everyone gets to have someone that's, that knows them like that. I think at the end of the day, when you're, when you're healing with someone, because that's what you guys are doing and you're doing it together, but you guys are separate people. So the way that she needs to be reassured is not the way that I need to be reassured and vice versa. The amount of paranoia that she gets m could not be the amount of paranoia that I get. So we're our own separate people, but we're healing through this together. I think it's cool to see how your relationship with that person develops. Um, I'm not saying it was 100% perfect, no. but it was not bad. Yeah, it's um, a learning experience for everyone involved. Hope those things helped. Um, I wouldn't know half of those things if it wasn't for her. We just talk about those things a lot. So it's interesting to see what we agreed on and what maybe I didn't think of that she obviously experienced mm -hmm. where I was not the person that was taking care of somebody. Yeah. Um, I think it's super important to check those boxes off as much as you can. So I just wanted to put out more content, content with somebody who experienced it um, on both ends. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, because it's good to know the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all because you want to know what you're getting yourself into, but at the same time, it's not all bad. It's It was rarely ever bad. If for whatever reason she didn't check off those boxes, then she wouldn't have been my caretaker. I think it would have been agreed on like, well, you can't do that. Yeah. I guess the point, I guess, with that is just, it's okay if someone is unable to do it. It's totally yeah. okay. Yeah. And it is. It's okay to say that you can't do it. You shouldn't feel like you have to do it because of whatever because relationship you're with girlfriend or because yeah. Which we already said, know. but I'm that's like just a huge thing. It's okay. It's okay. I hope this video helped you guys out or helped somebody out. Um, if you guys have any questions, I will have everything down here. I respond probably the fastest on Instagram because people message me on there. Um, if you want to see the progress that I've had 
in the last four weeks now. Go ahead and check out my last videos. It's right here. Um, other than that, make it a good day today, guys, and I will see you soon.